In this short video, we're going to do the rectifier mods for the Dynaco ST70 and put a couple diodes in to try and compensate for that um, tungsol saw tube that likes to arc over, which is quite common on the uh, tungsol saw rectifiers of new generation. Let's do it. Okay, we're back on the Dynaco. I'm going to um, I'm going to put the mod in. There's a modification to protect the 5AR4 tube from excessive reverse voltage because one of the problems with with the these design was the era when these amplifiers were current was when we had 110 volt um, main voltage the grid was 110 volts back in the 60s and in the late 60s they bumped the grid voltage to 120 volts and of course that's only 10 volts but you've got to remember that you're going through a step-up transformer so the voltage is much higher it's like 40 to 50 volts higher on the, the tube itself and some of the tubes especially the tongue soles were already running close to their limit and this pushes them beyond their limit and can cause flashover I'm just doing some research and it, it's not just it's not just these any of these units that use a vacuum tube rectifier are, are susceptible to this <clears throat> so there's an easy fix for it and it requires just moving a couple wires on the tube socket and adding a couple of high voltage silicon diodes the rectifier is still going to operate as a rectifier but it's going to have a, sil a solid state rectifier ahead of it and what that's going to do is that's going to uh, eliminate the negative going swing so typically your your plate is positive so it's going to cancel off the negative portion of the waveform negative waveform would never make it through the tube anyway right it's it, it the only time the tube conducts is when the plate is positive it pulls the electrons towards uh, the, the plate itself from the, the cathode uh, anyway um, we we'll put two diodes in and it will eliminate the the back half of the waveform so that it never makes it to the tube because it appears that it's the it's the reverse polarity is so high that it causes the tubes to arc over internally now wait a minute you say how does that work well see how a vacuum tube regulator or rectifier works is your your cathode emits electrons when it's hot the cathode is over here this red wire here goes over to the filter which becomes positive with respect to the the chassis itself so what happens is on the AC waveform here's your two inputs from the transformer so as the as the uh, AC waveform is doing this going up and down one side is going positive the other side's going negative and then they reverse and then the side goes positive and this side goes negative and when the wire is positive with respect to ground electrons from the cathode will be drawn towards the transformer or, or towards the through the electron tube towards the plate which returns back to the transformer with respect to the center tap which is grounded so um, it sounds confusing to people because you know you're thinking well um, a vacuum tube itself your plate is positive your cathode is negative how do you end up with a positive voltage on your cathode well it's all with respect to ground it's a depletion of electrons the electrons are there and they are attracted to the positive plate so it's a depletion of the electrons which actually pulls the cathode positive with respect to the center tap so what we're going to do on this is we're going to move a couple of the wires here we're going to move the wire from pin 4 to pin 5 which is, uh, is it? Yeah, pin 4 to pin 5 and pin 5 to pin 7 and then we're going to put the diode in place of it so let's just unsolder the wire and move it over we're going to move this wire to here See, pin 5 and pin 7 are not connected to anything internal. So we're just using this as a place to anchor the, uh, the wire. And then pin 4 to pin 5.
So now the plates, which are connected to pin 4 and pin 6, are open. We're going to put our diodes in. And we're going to put a diode between pin 5 and pin 6 and pin 4 and pin 5. And the diode goes in like this with the band side facing the old plate. So let's get the diode in here. There should be a place in here that I can stick it through still. These are 1 and 4007, 1000 volt, 1 amp uh, silicon diodes is what I'm putting in here. Again, the cathode of the diode is going to the old plate of the tube, and the anode is going to the transformer. We'll cut off the excess leads. Okay, now the amp's ready for testing and we'll put that new 5AR4 in that was arcing before and see if it works. So let's fire it up. Remember, this is the, this is the Chinese tube. This one worked before. This is the one that shorted out and blew the fuse. Now with modification, let's turn on the power and see whether we get any sound. Let's see what happens as it warms up. So it appears that the mod does work. 
that stopped this tube from arcing over internal and that arcing over internal was uh, likely because the uh, the reverse voltage is just a little too high on these these tongue saws and that's uh, something I, I just was going through some of the forums and I actually found this in a Marshall forum that uh, they were doing to some of the Marshall amps and some of the other guitar amps that used the, the tube rectifiers not just the 5A4 um, or not just the 5AR4 but all of them were having some problems with specifically tongue saw they were having some problems anyway um, the tube is appearing to work so the owner of this is going to be very happy that uh, he's now got a full new set of tubes in this thing as this thing warms up obviously the sound is going to get better because you know tubes have to warm up actually thoroughly before they perform properly so I'll let this thing bake for a while and then we'll take another listen to it momentarily well now that the unit is thoroughly warmed up the sound also has warmed up and all that distortion that you heard as it was warming up it has disappeared it appears that this new tongue saw tube is much slower to warm than the original Chinese tube that was in there it warmed up and it came up really quick and the high voltage came up very quickly on this one here it's a lot slower and it takes a good couple minutes for the voltage to fully build up but once it does it sounds phenomenal take a listen <laughs> So now you know how to modify one of these Dynaco ST70s to put a couple diodes ahead of the tube. And basically what they are what we are doing is we're putting a silicon diode ahead of the rectifier tube. So some would claim, well, you've just put a solid state rectifier in. No, I haven't. It's still a vacuum tube rectifier. It's just that the vacuum tube now is no longer seeing AC, it's seeing DC. Kind of like this. I'll give you a little diagram. So this is uh, normally how a, well, the diodes are normally not there. Normally your transformer, you've got your, your filament winding here, which is 5 volts, and then you've got your high voltage winding here. The center tap is grounded, and your high voltage normally goes to the two plates. And how it works is when the AC signal, or the AC waveform comes in, when the plate is more positive than the cathode electrons are drawn from the cathode towards the plate and they fly this direction here and they complete the circuit back to ground which in turn pulls this positive for your B plus so what we've done here and, and normally what would be presented here would be an AC signal like this but what we have now presenting it with is we're presenting just like this And the same was on this side. We're presenting it with. So we're removing, we're cutting it off. We're cutting off the negative half of the waveform. We're only allowing the positive half of the waveform to get through. So the, the diodes in, in effect, the diodes are rectifying. And we could actually remove the tube itself and just connect the two cathodes directly over to here that would be solid state rectification the reason that people like vacuum tube rectifiers is because these can pass a lot more current than a tube with a, a vacuum tube rectifier as you're drawing a heavy load with heavy base for example the voltage here will start to drop normally you've got your high voltage right you've got your B plus but under heavy loads, this will start to sag a little bit. The vacuum tube takes a little longer to recover. With, with solid state rectification, your charge voltage to your capacitor is instantaneous. And it will keep that capacitor running at full power at all times. With a vacuum tube, when you're drawing a heavy load, that voltage will start to dip ever so slightly. And the vacuum tube is a little takes a little longer to recover because the 
conduction in that vacuum here, the electrons between the cathode and the plates, is not as good as it is through a silicon diode. So by putting the two diodes in series with the plates, we're not changing the sound to a noticeable degree because you're still going to get the sag from the vacuum tube. If you bypass it completely and put your diode straight to the B plus rail, then you're going to get that slightly different sound. And some people like the sound of solid state rectifiers over uh, vacuum tube rectifiers just because you don't get that sag that you do. But other people, they prefer the saggy sound of a vacuum tube rectifier. And that's why many guitar amplifiers such as Mesa Boogie, for example, will have a switch that you can switch it to a vacuum tube a rectifier or you can switch it to a solid state rectifier so that you can get those two distinctly different sounds. Anyway, this is still wired as a vacuum tube rectifier. Now we're just giving the tube a little bit of protection. The plates of the tubes are only going to see plus positive voltage now. They're not going to see the negative voltages and that's what was causing the arc over was a high negative potential uh, was overloading what the tube was capable of. And again, it's, it's more it affects tongue saw more than some of the other ones just because tongue saw doesn't have quite as high of a, 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 of a, a rated voltage than some of the other tubes. But in part, a lot of it's because the grid now is a higher voltage than it was back in the 60s when these were developed. Anyway, unit's all back together, ready to go back. Client's going to be thrilled because now he's got a full set of new tubes, outputs and, and, and rectifier. These ones here are still original, but he's now got a full set of new tubes. Everything's biased, everything is balanced, and the tubes are all match set. So he's going to get the best possible sound he can get off this little uh, ST70 Dynaco. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.